All right, let's talk about the Cincinnati Bengals, who have almost been hyped up as like some sort of savior uh, of the NFL, as obviously with the, you know, uh, Kansas City Chiefs continuing to win. Tom Brady and Joe Burrow, the only people who have beaten Mahomes in the playoffs. Brady obviously has since retired, uh, and so Burrow's kind of what people view to be the last guy. And listen, you know, winning one game against Mahomes doesn't make you the Mahomes killer. Yes, he came very close to doing it again, but a lot of people have come close to beating uh, Mahomes in other games. It's the fact that he's actually done it, which is the impressive part. Um, And again, it was a team effort. It wasn't just Burrow. But I do think that being said, like the Bengals are a team that you do have to look at as a legit threat in the AFC and as a legit threat to Mahomes. And I'm assuming if you're a Chiefs fan, the last team you want to play in the playoffs is probably the Bengals. So that has to tell you something. Where are they at though? Can they get better? Like forget about, can they get back to where they were? Can they even improve potentially? Well, let's get into it. Right off the bat, you feel pretty great about when you look at this situation, 50 million in cap space, 47 million in projected cash. So they don't have a lot of like extra money. A lot of times you see these teams that have extra money because some of the cap space is inflated from this season. Not the case with the uh, Bengals. So while the cap space looks awesome, it might not actually be quite as good as it uh, looks like because usually cash is a better indicator of how much teams will actually spend. That being said, though, $47 million, st- still some money you can spend. So the just the issue is, you know, cap space, you can spend over the cap if you want to. Cash Once you have the money, like once the owner says, this is how much you're getting for free agents, you're kind of stuck there. Although I should also mention that projection is very much a projection and it's very possible they could have a hundred million in projected cash. Like it it varies wildly, but that's the most likely outcome uh, would be that much. As for the key free agents. So the top one at the top of the list, T Higgins, I put an asterisk next to, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, DJ Reader, Chidobi Awuzie, Jonah Williams and Tyler Boyd are all players that definitely uh, have had good moments in the NFL. Higgins, to start with him. So they franchise tagged him. So that's why there's an asterisk. That's why there's no number next to his name. The number next to everyone else's name is how many millions of dollars they're projected to get in free agency. Um, T Higgins uh, is someone who I put the asterisk there and I still put him on this list because yes, they're going to franchise tag him. He has to agree to it, to it though. And we've seen it happen before where a team says we're franchise tagging you like the Lamar Jackson thing last year right they franchise tagged Lamar Jackson and he said like no like that's not I'm not playing on the franchise tag give me a deal and then it worked out a deal so just because the franchise tag happens doesn't necessarily mean uh that's what's going to happen and he's going to play on it but he might and you know so also worth mentioning the money that they use for the franchise tag has been already added against the cap that I put showed you earlier um, DJ Reader, again, a good player, like definitely someone that if you're a Bengals fan, you want to, want to keep on the, uh, keep on the roster. And he's not as old as I feel, like, I don't know. He's one of those guys that you think about him and you're like, oh, he's got to be like 35. He's 29. He'll be 30 next year. So not young, but not someone that you want to let go. But again, do you maybe spend that money elsewhere? I don't know. It's interesting. Chidobi Awuzie, I actually think isn't coming off his best season, which might be a, good thing for corners. I wouldn't be worried about it. I- I'd resign him. I, I would. Uh, I think corners are good when you have a corner that fits in your system. You do that. I think there's a lot of issues. And he- Playing time has been an issue for him. Uh, past couple years, that's something you have to look at. Hopefully, he can stay healthy. But um, but yeah, I mean, I, mean I-, I would still keep him. I get that there's concerns. Secondary is weird. There's always going to be concerns with some players. I-, I wouldn't I wouldn't stress out about it too much. Um, Jonah Williams, I got to be honest. If he's getting 15 million, it's not coming from me. That's what I think. Um, you know, uh, I, I don't know. It's just a weird situation. I, I think that's that's a pretty high contract. Hasn't been good really these past couple of years. Uh, I get that he's 26, and I get that the college prospect stop always. I mean, it is a real thing where I think teams look at someone who is a big high college prospect, and they might say, oh, we can get him undervalued because, uh, you know, he was a talented player, but since it didn't go well in the NFL, maybe, like, we'll get a good contract, and actually usually works the other way. Usually, you end up overpaying for that player because other teams think that way. Um, so, I don't know. I think I'd let someone else uh, sign him. I spend that money on someone else, which you can usually get quality tackles. Usually not elite tackles uh, in free agency, but you can usually get, like, quality tackles pretty consistently. I'd probably spend that money on that instead. Um And then Tyler Boyd, like, yeah, I think I'm keeping him as well. Unless you're going to replace him with a better receiver, which maybe you could do. Again, 29, not coming off of his best season. So, like, I get it. 
but he's 29. I usually expect a couple years. I think giving him like a, you know, a, a, a two-year contract, something like that, maybe a three-year contract, that feels reasonable to me. Uh, I wouldn't go much further than that. And again, I could see you getting outbid. But if it's $9 million that he's projected to get, like, I don't have an issue with that deal. I really don't. I also want to talk about this chart real quick. So this is going to be, uh, this is Joe Burrow's cap number really pay attention to the left uh chart there uh and you know the 19 million that was this most recent season it's now uh 29.7 million uh so you know still really a good deal for a guy like Joe Burrow that's actually kind of a steal uh, at that point uh, you feel very good about that and even paying him 50 million you're still going to be competitive because he's worth that much but at the same time, you kind of look at that and you say, well, I don't want to pay him, you know, we want to be as competitive as possible now. And again, you might go to the owner and say, hey, let's give us a little more money now. We'll take a little bit less in a couple of years, right? Let's, let's make sure we can be competitive as possible this upcoming season when the Chiefs, despite the fact that they came, came off winning a Super Bowl, look as human as they've looked uh, just because of how dominant they've been. Like this might be the time to make not go all in, but maybe do a little bit more of a push than you otherwise would. I also feel like, you know, I think we kind of view the Bengals as, oh, get Joe Burrow healthy and under good. Everything else is golden. I don't know if that's fully true. You look at their pro football focus grades for each positional category last season. So the passing 14th, like, yeah, that made sense. Burrow had a couple bad games early and then he got hurt. Browning looked all right. And he's a free agent as well. I didn't mention him, but someone you can pay attention to. But, you know, that's fine. The receiving, though, only 11th best. Usually it's, you know, best, right? Like, usually it's like the top receiving core. So, again, uh, getting guys, maybe getting guys healthy, maybe go out and get another receiver, as crazy as that sounds. Offensive line, you know, below average as usual. Uh, running game below average. The rushing they were not crazy about. And then the, you know, the defense was not as good as it usually is. The coverage graded 27th, run defense graded 20th, and pass rush graded 13th. So going to their final chart, you could easily look at this and say, well, you know, 50 million in cap space, 47 in cash, cost about 50 million to re-sign everybody. Just re-sign everybody, you're good. It's not quite that simple. I do think that there are some you know, maybe tweaks they need to make for this roster to work. Don't get me wrong. I think they're close. Like, I think they can compete for a championship. I just don't think it's as, I think it would be a mistake for them to say, oh, once Joe Burrow's back, we're going to win a Super Bowl next year. I also think it could happen. Like, I don't think that that's actually out of the question. I just think that I would be a little bit more um, aggressive this offseason than maybe you might expect. And I wouldn't be shocked that that's how they uh, handle this. So, yeah. Uh, interesting situation before Cincinnati's at, but those are my thoughts. Uh, I do think they're a Super Bowl contender because they have the quarterback and they do have a lot of talent around. Uh, got some, got to make sure that you don't screw this up, but I think uh, I, I do trust them. Honestly, just give T. Higgins a long-term deal. I should mention that as well. I have no issue with that. Uh, make him, Give him a long-term deal. You can spend against the cap, you know, um, it actually would help you out probably this season, cap space-wise and cash-wise. But yeah, those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.